Now let's go back to our UI real quick and just get a kind of handle on what types of properties we're going to want. So we're going to want a list that has matching plans. Well, we, we kind of already have that. Um, we already have the matching plans list. Uh, we might have to do something to let the UI know that it's being changed. Um, what else do we need? We need something to be our uh, kind of hold our structure ID. So we need to bind this to the back end. We're going to make a property specifically for that. Um, we need to make a relay command to drive this button. That's going to be bound. And then we're going to need something down here. We're going to need like a mean dose uh, a string really uh, so that we can show um, the mean dose for the structure for the selected plan. So let's get started. Let's just add some properties real quick to our view model. So I'll make a section here, I'll call it UI stuff. And I'm going to make a new relay command. I'm going to import the right namespace. That comes with the MVVM Lite framework again. So we're going to look at these three properties right here. So the first one is a, is a relay command. We're going to call it search command. And that's the thing that we're going to bind to the button. So when this is bound to the button, button clicks it, this is going to be called. Uh, let's see, what else? We want an input structure ID and we want the selected mean dose. This is a string, these are both strings. So let's go ahead and bind these to the front end. Let's see how that's done. First thing I'm going to do is just copy that real quick. Head over to the UI, select my button, and buttons all have a property called command. And here is where some of the magic is going to take place. So in order to bind it, bind a property or a, a relay command to the back end, this is the syntax. You have an open curly bracket. You say binding. And then you name the property that you're binding to. In this case, it's search command. So if we were to click this button as the program is running, that search command relay command would be called. Okay, let's do it again. In this case, on the text box, we're going to bind that as well. We're going to bind the text property, so whatever's inside there. We're going to bind that to the, what was that property I had? It's called input structure ID. Copy and paste that right here. So we're going to bind that to the input structure ID. So when this changes, that will automatically update that background model for us. And then we can use that when we press the search button. The last thing we're going to do is down here, I have just a space hold. I have it being held as a zero. Let's go ahead and bind that text to the selected mean dose property uh, that we have on the back end as well. Now, um, the trick here is that all of these things that are bound to the front end need to be public properties of your backing class or your view model. So if they're not public, they're not going to bind correctly. So what do we want that search command to do? Well, let's think about it. When, so when someone clicks the search command, we want to call the set structure ID of whatever is inside of that text box. And so what's inside that text box? The input structure ID. We bound this property to that. So this will automatically update. So let me show you how to point a relay command uh, and do something afterwards. Let me make a quick method here. And this isn't going to do anything. I'm just going to call it search command action. I just want to show you how this works because uh, sometimes people get thrown off by anonymous methods. Um, so I'm going to show you just a normal method how this would work. Um, we'll say uh, set structure ID to input structure ID. So this is the this is the method we want called whenever that button's clicked. So we need to instantiate uh, and set the value of this search command. The way you do that is go back up to your constructor and let's go ahead and tell it what the search command is because right here it's just we said it was a property, but we didn't set its value. So now we need to say the search command is a new relay command. And we want it to do this action. We want to search, we want it to do the search command action. Just like that. Okay. And what that will do is when uh, that button is clicked, it's going to call the uh, search command relay command property. 
And this is already pointing to this method right here, and so that it's going to call that method. All right, that is one way to do that. You can just input the method name uh, right into the input of the relay command. Another way, the way I like to do this is a little bit. Uh, it might be harder to read if you're not used to seeing lambda expressions, but it's really powerful. And that is to put an anonymous method in here. So I'm just going to do, to do an open uh, bracket here, and this is what's called a lambda expression. And basically, this syntax right here says do whatever is inside of these brackets. So I'm without actually declaring a method somewhere else in my code, I'm just going to tell it right here to do this action uh, whenever the relay command is called. So that is an anonymous method uh, that I'm inputting directly into the relay command. And if you have a hard time understanding this concept or the lambda expression really throws you off, you can do it that way I just showed you. Um, that also works just the same way. Um, I just like this, this syntax better without having another method in my class. Okay, let's go work on our list box. Remember our list box is going to hold all of the plans that reference that structure ID. So right now it looks pretty sparse. Um, I am going to add some code here. The first thing we want to do is go ahead and data bind this. Um, and you're going to data bind it to the items source property. And we want the item source to be matching plans. That's our property on the back end that we want to fill this uh, list box. Okay, so the problem is um, WPF has no idea how you want to render a plan. A plan is not a renderable object. Um, it's got a lot of different properties to it. It's got an ID and a name and a uh, creation date and all, all of that. It doesn't know what you want to show. So in order to tell it how to render each one of those objects, you have to set um, another property of the list box, which is the list box item template. Now, if you had this defined somewhere else, you could uh, say item template up here and go ahead and tell it what that is. There's actually another way you can set properties of XAML objects, and that's by going inside of the element and retyping the element and then doing the dot notation like C sharp. And uh, in this case, we're looking for the item template property. I'm going to close that out. Now, the item template property is what is going to show how to render out each one of those plans. So we can be very specific on how we want the plan to be rendered out. In this case, we're just going to have a simple text box that says the ID, or which is the name, really an eclipse, of the plan. Now, there's one trick here is that the item template requires a wrapper for the code that's going to show how to render it. And that element wrapper is called a data template. So once you have that in place, you can go ahead and, and put whatever type. You can have a very complicated way to show the plan. Um, in this case, we're just going to do, um, like I said, a text block with a text property. We're going to bind it. And one other thing about this is that the um, list box, the data context of that, is our backing class. See, we're, re we're binding to the matching plans. That's a property of our view model. But what is the data context of the item template? Well, it's not the view model. It's actually it's smart enough that it realizes that um, since you're binding the item source to the matching plans, Whatever the matching plan object type is, that is what needs to be the data context of um, this inside part here. So it knows that the, the data context of this is going to be a plan setup object. If you go back to our matching plans property, you can see it's a list of plan setups. And plan setups have a property called ID. So we don't have to say, we don't have to descend down the hierarchy of the view model. This already knows this is a plan setup, so we can just bind directly to the property of the plan setup ID. Okay, so it's a text box, and remember I said that um, it's always good to pad these things. It just makes them easier to read.